I want to wish a happy birthday to one of our favorite wearables projects, the Firewalker sneakers. Originally created by Phil B, this Flora tutorial was uploaded to our YouTube channel two years ago. And in that time, we've seen dozens of you make your own versions at home. We've also seen a bunch of really common questions about this project. And even though I answer questions every week on our live wearable show, I thought I'd put all of these questions together in one video. It's more convenient for you. First up, what sneakers are these? These are a pair of high top Vans. I think the model was Alomar and they're in ballistic nylon. We've made them in black and gray. So many of you ask, where can I buy Firewalker LED sneakers pre-assembled? And while you can post up in the Adafruit Jobs Board to find a maker who will make them for you, I've also seen a bunch of off the shelf, similar looking LED sneakers show up on eBay and Etsy if you just look for LED sneakers. But the joy of making your own can never be underestimated and you won't get that sick fire walking animation anywhere else. Thomas Edwards says, awesome, but I'm curious why regular batteries are used instead of a live poly battery. And that's a really good question. Uh, we knew that this project would be pretty popular for beginners and we wanted to encourage people to use alkaline batteries because they're more safe. If you're an advanced user and you understand how to protect and work with these batteries, then by all means you can use any size live poly batteries to run your Firewalker sneakers and even make like a pocket for the battery so it's not quite so chunky on the shoe. A lot of you asked, can I use a Gemma for the Firewalker sneakers instead of the Flora? And the short answer is sure. The long answer is that it's, it's not easier. It may be lower cost, but since Gemma doesn't have onboard serial debugging, it can be hard for you to calibrate your sensor to your steps. And that's an important part of building the Firewalker sneakers is putting the sensor in the shoe, stepping on it while it's plugged into the computer to see the number readout. Velistat is actually a packing material designed for anti-static, and we're exploiting the fact that the resistance changes when you squeeze it, but all the batches are different so it's really important to calibrate your sensor and it's really difficult to calibrate an analog sensor on Gemma. So while it is possible um, and it can reduce the cost of your project, it's not going to make it easier for a beginner to build the project with Gemma. We get a lot of questions about durability, like what happens if it rains? Well, this project uses both conductive thread and soldered wire, so if it rains, obviously those conductive thread traces are going to get shorted out. So if you want to wear your Firewalker sneakers in the rain, I'd recommend swapping the conductive thread for wire. Uh, it tapes onto the Velostat just as well, you just might have a harder time getting it through your shoe. And then uh, I would clear coat the circuit board with something like clear nail polish or a conformal coating. We have more information about ruggedizing your electronics in our video on the topic. Zachary asks, can I put the sensor on the upper part of the shoes where my toes are? I'm thinking about shuffling with these babies on. Yeah, you can move the sensor to the toe of the shoe if you want. You just might have to uh, sort of switch the sensitivity of the sensor around so that you're actually getting the result you want. Since we put it in the heel because that's where most of your weight lands when you're walking, so it might not have as much variability in the number for the sensor if you put it in the toes, but experiment with it and let us know. Can you add a mode switch to make a walking mode, continuous flashing mode, a pulse mode, and a sound mode? I want to make six pairs for a New Year's Eve costume. Uh, yeah, sure. There's plenty of space on the Flora microcontroller for more animation modes. And if you want to look at a project that does have multiple animation modes with a Flora, you could take a look at the Flora Brella project. It has a button that allows you to switch between different animation modes. That could be a good jumping off point for your code. Any tips to ruggedize the NeoPixel strips? I find over time this strip breaks where the bend is. NeoPixel strip is designed to bend this way, but it's not designed to bend laterally. So eventually there is some fatigue there. And the project sort of shows you how to mitigate that a little bit by not gluing the bendy part directly to the shoe so it can kind of flare out, but it's not a perfect solution. And if you want to wear them every single day, you're going to have to expect to do some maintenance on them, first of all. But then um, around the toe, maybe you would cut the NeoPixel strip solder on silicone coated flexible wire to a couple of the single individual NeoPixels and then pick up again to the strip on the toe so that you have like a, a material that's designed to bend a lot right where it does bend a lot and then um, in order to waterproof that up you have to use some additional Permatex 66B or, or um, an extra piece of sheathing from another piece of NeoPixel strip could be a way to go but it, at best you should expect these to be a very special pair of shoes that you take very good care of. So those are the frequently asked questions about the Firewalker sneakers. If you're wanting help with your own electronics projects, you can post up in the Adafruit forums where our engineers will help work through those code modifications and circuit changes for your own custom versions. And we love to see your projects on the weekly Adafruit show and tell on Google+. 
If you have more wearables questions, I'll tackle them every week on our live wearables broadcast. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel on YouTube to catch all the things we're up to. Thanks for watching.